Okay, so now that we've part A done and we've done the additional um, ratios to the ratios that are given the question here, now we've got all these ratios for 2019 and we've calculated for 2020. Now we can we can start commentating and doing part B. And we're looking from the shareholders' point of view. So what I've done up here is I've done up um, a little table of the headings that you're supposed to have. So you should have at least seven headings. So we're going to talk about profitability, dividend policy, liquidity, gearing, investment policy, the sector, and share pro performance. These are always going to be the same headings that you're going to use when you're looking at the shareholder point of view. And underneath these headings, we're going to look at the return on capital employee, the EPS. Underneath dividend policy, we're going to look at dividend cover, dividend per share, dividend yield, and dividend payout. Underneath liquidity, we're going to look at the asset test. Underneath gearing, we're going to look at gearing and interest cover. Under the investment policy, we're going to look at investment policy. Under the sector, we're going to look at the sector. And under the share performance, we're going to look at EPS, which can come underneath share performance or profitability. It doesn't really matter where you want to put them. I like putting it underneath the profitability. We're going to look at the P ratio. I'm going to look at the market price per share. And then at the end, then we're going to give our overall. Make sure you always give your overall, whether, whether it's a yes or a no, and a reason behind it. Now these have all been taken, looked at from all the past exam questions I've come up and I've looked at the similarities between them all and I've put them into the questions to ask yourself, the template that you can fill in and also a suggested solution for it. So what you need to learn or stick onto flashcards is look at the questions or the template. The template is going to be the same for every year. So it's just a matter of learning off and filling in the blanks. So. Down here then, a little um, kind of acronym or something to try to help you remember these headings. So Paul does landscape gardening in spring and summer. So Paul is profitability, does is dividend policy, landscape is liquidity, gardening is gearing, in is your investment policy, spring is sector, and summer then is your share performance. So if you look at the first one, which is performance, and we're looking at the profitability, do you have to have performance and profitability down as part of your headings? No, not necessarily, but it would have the headings for the main ones like return on capital employed. So return on capital employed, the answers or questions you need to answer is say what you see compared to previous years. Is this an improvement or disimprovement, positive or negative trend? They're kind of key terms that they're looking for as part of the marketing scheme. Improvement, disimprovement, positive, negativity, healthy, unhealthy. Say if the company is profitable, Compared to risk-free investments, that must be in it as part of return on capital employed. Compared to the venture and preference um, shares rates, that has to be included as return on capital employed. And then would shareholders be happy or satisfied or dissatisfied? So your template in whatever the year is, the return on capital employed is, whatever it is, in the year the return on capital employed was, whatever it is. So this is this year, 2020. This is this year, 2019. This is an improvement or a disimprovement of how much. So take this figure away from this figure and it's a positive or negative trend. The company is profitable or not profitable, depending on whether it's positive or negative trend, as return on capital employee is higher or lower than risk-free investments. Is above or below the debenture rate of rate of interest of whatever the rate of interest is, look back at your balance sheet. And above or below the preference share rate of whatever it is, look back at your balance sheet. Shareholders will be satisfied or not satisfied as the company is making efficient or inefficient use of resources available to them. So that's your template. So then what we do then is we fill in our templates. In 2020, the return on capital employed is 9.5. So that's what we calculated. In 2019, the return on capital employed was 9.7. That's what's given to us in the question. This is an improvement of point four seven percent and is a positive trend so all we're doing is taking out the figures that we don't need or the words that we don't need as part of our template the company is profitable as return is higher than risk-free investments of zero to one now now that we're in 2022 the risk-free investments are zero to one at the moment so you're not getting a huge amount for your return it's also above the debenture rate of eight percent and preference share capital of nine percent so if we look back at our Profit and loss again. Look back at our question. So this is where we're getting the majority of figures from. So we got preference shareholders 9%, debentures 8%. That's where those figures are coming from. 
shareholders will be happy as the company is making efficient use of its resources available to them. That's a template. That's what you're going to use for every question for shareholders under return on cap implied. You're just going to fill in the template, include the words that you need that make sense to explain it. Your EPS then, so same again, say what you see compared to pre previous years. Is this an improvement or disimprovement? Positive or negative trend? Would shareholders be satisfied or dissatisfied? So in 2020, so that should be the year. So in the year, so remember this is your template. The EPS is so many cent. And in the year, the EPS is so many cent. This is an improvement or disimprovement of, so whatever it is, calculated, and is a positive or negative trend. Shareholders will be satisfied or dissatisfied with this as it indicates the profit and cent coming from shares and how well the shareholders' investment is used. So remember, that's your template. All what you're going to do is fill in the blank and everything else then is going to be the same. You're just going to take out the words that you don't need. So for this one, in 2020, the EPS is 15 cent. In 2019, the EPS is 16 cent. This is an improvement. It's a disimprovement of one cent and is a negative trend. Shareholders will be dissatisfied with this as it indicates that profit and cent is coming from shares and how well shareholders investment is used over the years. So to be dissatisfied because it's not, their investment is not being used as well. So the dividend policy then, once again, you're going to have your questions. So say what you see compared to previous years. Is this an improvement or disimprovement, positive or negative trend? Would shareholders be satisfied or dissatisfied? So same again, in the year the dividend cover is whatever it is. In the year the dividend cover was whatever it was. This is an improvement, disimprovement. And as a positive negative trend, it means more or less profit has been retained for expansion purposes and repayment of loans. Shareholders will be satisfied or dissatisfied with this as it, as it increases share value, knowing payments are more or less likely to continue in the future. So if it's a positive, you're going to use all the positive terms. If it's a negative, you're going to use all the negative terms. So in 2020, the dividend cover is 7.5 times. In 2019, the dividend cover was 2.5 times. This is an improvement and is a positive trend. It means more profit has been retained for expansion purposes and repayment of loans. Shareholders will be satisfied with this as it increases the share value and knowing payments are more likely to continue into the future. Your dividend per share then, or your DPS, so the questions to answer, once again, say what you see compared, compared to previous years. Is this an improvement or disimprovement, positive or negative trend, and would shareholders be satisfied or dissatisfied? So that's going to be the same for all these questions. You're going to compare to previous years. Is it an improvement or disimprovement? Is this a positive or negative trend? And would shareholders be satisfied or dissatisfied? So your template then, in the year, the DPS is how many cent? In the year the DPS was how many cent? This is an improvement or disimprovement of how many cent? This is a positive or negative trend. Shares are we happy or not happy with this in the short term as it indicates how much dividends they will receive. So for this question, in 2020, the dividend per share is 2 cent. In 2019, the dividend share was 6.4 cent. This is a disimprovement of 4.4 cent. This is a negative trend. Shareholders will not be happy with this in the short term as it indicates how much dividends they're going to receive. Your dividend yield then, so the same again, say what you see compared to each year. Is this an improvement or disimprovement? Is this a positive or negative trend compared to risk-free investments, compared to the venture and preference share rates? Would shareholders be satisfied or dissatisfied? So your dividend yield is a bit like the return on shareholder or the return on capital employed. So your template in the year the dividend yield is whatever the percentage is. In the year the dividend yield was whatever it is. This is an improvement or disimprovement of how many percent and is a positive or negative trend. It is higher or lower than risk free investments of between whatever it is for that current year. And this is also higher or lower than the ventures of whatever it is in the question and preference shares of whatever it is in the question. Shareholders will be satisfied or dissatisfied with this as the company will find it easy or difficult to pay out dividends. So for this question, Fuji PLC, the 2021 question. In 2020, the dividend yield is 1.1%. In 2019, the dividend yield was 4%. This is a slight disimprovement of 2.9%. And if it continues, is a negative trend. Well, it is a negative trend anyway, so and is a negative trend. 
It's still higher than risk-free investments of one between one and two percent, but it is lower than the benchers of eight percent and preference shares of nine percent. Shares will be dissatisfied with this as a company will find it difficult to pay out dividends. And then your dividend payout then, so say what you see compared to previous years. Is this an improvement or disimprovement? Positive or negative trend? Would shareholders be satisfied or dissatisfied? Template, so in the year, the dividend payout is whatever the percentage is. In the year, the dividend payout was whatever the percentage was. This an improvement or disimprovement and a positive or negative trend. Shareholders would like to see this closer to 50% and will be satisfied or dissatisfied with this. So in 2020, the dividend payout is 13.3%. In 2019, it was 40%. This is a disimprovement and negative trend. Shareholders would like to see it closer to 50% and will be dissatisfied with this. And there's a little bit of information there about the dividend payout. Now I'll save this and I'll put it up onto the page on the website. But how do you calculate your dividend payout? Is your DPS divided by your EPS multiplied by 100 over 1. So now we're coming down to liquidity. So asset test ratio, once again, say what you see compared to previous years. Is this an improvement or a disimprovement, positive or negative trend compared to the recommended ratio? So if your asset test is usually one is to one. Does the company have liquidity problems? Can they pay back debts in the short term? Would shareholders be satisfied or dissatisfied? So your template, once again, is there. Say what you see down along. So all we're going to do is fill in the template here. So in 2020, the asset test ratio is 2.49 is to 1. 2019, the asset test ratio is 1.8 is to 1. This is a, an improvement of 0.69 cent and is above the recommended ratio of 1 is to 1. Um, Fuki Limited PLC does not have liquidity problems as they're able to pay back debts as they fall during the short term. This is because they have 2.49 in liquid assets for every euro it owes in short term. Shareholders will be happy as Fuki Limited will have will not have problems paying out dividends or other short-term debts in the future. However, their liquidity is too conservative and too much capital is tied up in debtors and is unavailable for other purposes. So that's something that you might look at, see how much is actually in their debtors. So if we look here, the debtors 174,000, so that's massive. That's how much money is owed to us. So we need to look at our debtor stays and get that money coming in as quickly as possible. That's kind of a new one that you can add in your gearing then so remember same again say what you see compared to previous years is this an improvement disapprovement positive or negative trend and is the company hard your lowly geared company does it depend on outside borrowing would shareholders be satisfied or dissatisfied so there's your template there it's just a matter of learning it off and i'm going to fill it in for this question so in 2020 the gearing ratio was 56.36 percent 2019 the gearing ratio was 62 percent this is an improvement and a positive trend, but the company is still a highly geared company. This means the company is less dependent on outside borrowing and would appear to be less of a risk from outside investors. Shareholders will be satisfied as the company is now less dependent on outside borrowing, but they would appear to be a significant risk to from outside investors itself. All right, so that's using the capital. You can use the debt to equity ratio to see what it's like. So ratio is of a negative trend and it's in disapproved from 62% to 129%. So this is a negative trend. So just another way, just checking the gearing. So remember when we come to our um, calculating our ratios, we know for our gearing policies that we've got two types that we can use. So we've got the total capital, we also got the equity capital as well. So it's kind of a good way to check in to see what is the gearing ratio like. Because if we look at the ratio here, it looks good because it's going down. But if we look at our equity, our equity has actually gone up, so it doesn't look that well. Your interest covered then. So once again, you're going to say what you see. So you can pause the video and have a read of it there for yourself. So in 2020 and 19, um, your interest policy, investment policy. So there's no investment policy given this question, so we don't have to include it. The last one is your sector. So once again, you can pause the video for each one of these and see what it says. It's just I'm running out of time now. Performance then, once again, pause the video. And there's your overall. So pause as you go along. 